The views and opinions of this show is not necessarily the views and opinions of the National Hockey League, its affiliates, or sponsors. A Shot from the Point contains dark humor and foul language and is intended for mature audiences only. To summarize the previous, this isn't your grandma's radio show, and I'm not Foster Hewitt. Coming at you on demand from the heart of Europe. This is the most badass hockey podcast I know of. If you know of one, please let me know because I want to listen. My name is Tommy C. Coming straight to you from Germany. This week, we cover all the NHL news going on and happenings. And I bring you the original of originals, the host of hosts, Chicago Dead On Dave. Dave, how you doing there today? Hawks are amazing! Hawks are amazing! The Dave. Hawks, I'm the Hawks. I'm excited to be here. Oh, you must be. I'm excited to be here. Why aren't you excited to be here? I had a rough day at work, man. Oh, Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> we all can't be retired like a fat guy that I know by the name of. Uh, no, I just, you know, obviously I can't go into it if I want to keep my employment. But uh, <laughs> let's, let's see if I can go around about the, the situation. The If you get an upgrade in some kind of uh, feature, whatever business you happen to be in, it's usually exciting for people, uh, upper management, not even lower management, uh-huh to get involved because because you made this upgrade it certainly guarantees you're going to rake in more revenue just because it's an upgrade but of course to people like me that are on the ground and see the type of people and yeah, the situation the that drives people to the film business you know that this is not going to be as big a deal so during this time Boy, I really, I can't even talk about it. I got I to gotta walk around. It's horrible. <laughs> During this time, it creates a lot of nerves when a lot of bigwigs. And as you well know, shit rolls downhill. And yep. I've been dealing with this shit rolling downhill all week. So all Sucks the, being low, man, on a totem pole. Yeah. And I, and what what made it even worse was exactly like we predicted or the the low men on the totem pole, that this was not as big a blockbuster as everybody anticipated it being. Uh, you got to figure hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent. And the it probably, the revenue, if, if anything based on the first night, they're not going to recoup. Uh-huh. Uh, I might be. I might be out of work now. <laughs> oh well, that well, that's not a ha ha. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I'm cross too good. because it, in one hand, you know, I'm I'm terrified that I'll lose my job. On the other hand, it's kind of funny, you know, to watch the people that refuse to listen you head for the hills after. Uh, you know, you like you really. We went from like you know 360 degrees. We went from a situation where everybody was trying to figure out a way to take credit for it to running for the hills when nobody showed up. Everyone's like, no, nah, uh, here's the potato. The potato is blame. <laughs> yeah, so... The potato is blame. So it's it's certainly all the people... The, then it's the lowest people on the totem pole's fault that this fell apart. Well, you and I should start a hockey league of our own. We could be we could be rival owners, mm-hmm. and we can recruit a... Bu- and, but here's the thing. It's a hockey league for... German teenagers under the age of 16. Okay? Who's going to watch so, that? I don't know, but probably pedophiles mostly. 16? they got to be lower than that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I don't know what the current pedophile attraction age is nowadays. Then why would you bring it up? I don't know. I'm just trying to fucking... I'm giving some ideas. I'm, <laughs> I'm an idea man. Oh, Jesus. I'm here for you, buddy. Thanks for being there. <laughs> Well, You're geez. welcome. Uh, We're both Catholic. I didn't think it was that out of the box. You think I can get Jake on now? Or uh... <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? It's like, what was I thinking? Bringing the fat guy back again. Yeah, well, going back to my misery. I mean, I feel oh. like Rick DiPietro. 
Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Here, let's sign you to a long-term deal and get yeah, the fuck out. That's essentially what happened. We signed something to a long-term deal that is guaranteed not to produce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like my whole uh, under-16-year-old hockey league. Yeah. It probably oh. wouldn't work. And now everybody's screwed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the um, Zamboni driver's fault. You can always go back to your Harlem Shake video business. Yeah, that, that's working out. That's working out fantastic. It is working out fantastic. Fifty thousand hits. <laughs> there you go. I guess you know it's funny you mention that. Like I, I guess it's going to move up to. Um, I guess I'm going to eventually hit a hundred thousand. I mean, eventually. I, I mean, yeah. it's, I read that uh, a true viral video. Like it's like five million. It's a million, like a million in one day. Million plus, yeah. Like a million. That's a, like a true viral video. But I mean, you know, ten thousand in one day is good enough for me. No. Yeah, hell yeah. No. Uh, and uh, let me, uh, by the way, you know, when I said the subscribers weren't uh, coming in, uh, we, I, I expect a much even bigger audience than this week. We've had 15 in the last 10 days. All right. What's up, new bitches? Yeah, yeah. What's up, my new hockey fucks? I, I, you know, I didn't, I wish I'd have checked. I think they're mostly Canadian, but I. I you really shouldn't have opened so uh, morosely then. Why is that? Hey, welcome well, everybody. Uh, new we got new people, and it's like, hi, this is this is welcome to hockey. With I'm Doctor Death. It doesn't like, get what it, the fuck. It doesn't get any better from here. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, the the incline doesn't like go. We don't we don't quite reach the other side of the hill. Well, it's, <laughs> it's an upward battle the whole fucking way. Speaking of of Rich DiPietro, um, you know, you can't joke about suicide. Nobody's got a fucking sense of humor about that these days. I know. What the fuck? Well, guess who tried to do it? Rick DiPietro? You got it. Uh, DiPietro's in a little trouble right now, um, or self-defense mode. He, uh, he eventually, he got, he got, I guess he put on waivers. Now he got sent to the minors. And, uh, well, wait a minute. Am I, is this old? I better check this before I start talking about it like it happened today. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of day. No, it was published on March first, so we're, we're on, oh, okay. We're yeah, it was yesterday, like last so. last year. Uh, Rick Rick got sent down to a minor league affiliate of the New York Islanders, and he made a comment to the fact that um, well, the question was asked him was like, you know, you get into this business because it's fun. Is there? And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Is there any time when you're not having fun? He said, if it wasn't for my wife, she's a drill sergeant in the family, I probably would have. Drove my car into a tree or off the Frog's Neck Bridge. Oh, <laughs> and, you know, me and you know you can't joke about suicide because... Uh, well, you can. It's just it's just frowned upon. Yeah. I suppose. I mean, uh, it, it's frowned upon. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not widely looked upon with, with glee and Which happy. is ironic because Islander fans wanted to drive themselves off the edge of a bridge. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? DPH will start. So then he had to send his publicist out to do damage control, saying, no, he doesn't really want to kill himself. He was just kind of being self-deprecating and goofy. <laughs> I got released and I want to eat a bullet. Just kidding. Ah, funny guy. I'm a funny guy. DPH. Well, you know, we all can't be Blackhawks, you know, no. unfortunately. No. I think the world would be better if we were all Blackhawks, but we're not. We all can't stay healthy either. I know, right? Jeez. Poor, poor Rick DiPietro. But, uh, and I, I, I'm not, I'm really not goofing about what he said. And I think people just take stuff way too seriously. Everything's taken too seriously. Hey, come on, man. We're, we're, we're living in a day now where we're day after the, the, the doomsday sequester and nothing fucking changed. In fact, the, the, the stock markets rose yesterday yeah. in, in light of it. Everything's bullshit, people. That's what you got to remember. Life is basically bullshit. Watch some hockey because you know what? That makes my life better. Real quick note on the sequester. The worst thing that could happen to the president in the sequester is that <laughs> the sequester happens because you know yeah. he's running around like this is doomsday. He actually yeah. made a comment that I cannot defend the country. He should be impeached for that. Oh stuff. my god! And you know you're... Nixon had I am not a crook, and Obama has I... now I'm not a dictator. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, I and <laughs> yeah. <I'm not> a... <laughs> Well, you had to say that. <laughs> it's like why, by saying it, I mean, when Nixon said it, he was a fucking was crook. A crook. Yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like admitting by omission. It's horrible. It's so funny. The guy's been acting like a dictator since he got reelected, and now <laughs> dude, this is too funny. And they, so, he, so he decides to use this sequester thing as a way 
to fight against his political enemies. Yep. Something he said that he was certainly going to veto um, just a few months ago. And now he's yeah. like, my hands are tied. It's the bad guy's fault. And yep. I don't know if anybody's really buying it. And as it was pointed out to me, if you do this and you set up Doomsday and <laughs> Y2K happens, you're going to look like a moron. Yeah. And you might say things like, I'm not a dictator. <laughs> well, if he hadn't lost me, like, from the beginning of this, when he started being president, he certainly lost me when he flubbed the Star Wars, Star Trek line. What a douche. The Jedi mind meld. What the hell is he doing? Yeah. What a horrible human being. He's so out of touch with everything. Yeah. It makes He's the, out of touch with reality, You want certainly. to drive off the Frog's Neck Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna start a under sixteen year old German hockey league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe his will be funnier than your joke. Thanks a lot. <laughs> hey man, I tried. Okay, I know you're trying. Like I'm I'll... trying. I'm not. I'm not Jake Link. Okay, not, <laughs> you know Jake Link. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even a Dan Fogelberg. Did you, did you see this video? I don't know if you, I didn't send it to you because I've been so busy at work. And... You sent me nothing. I have no. I know. I know. But we're we're, we're just going about. through the news. By the way, we're we're not doing the NHL team of the week anymore. The reason Thank we're not. God, because that was a dumpster. You know, you, here's the here's what I figured out. I thought I took the Blackhawks segment. That was bad. In, in yeah, that was that was brilliant. That was radio magic. <laughs> I, I I think my heart was in the right place with the uh, NHL team of the week. The problem is what I noticed is when uh, reporters or experts go over NHL teams, what they do normally is talk about them for about two minutes, and that's what ended up happening to us. And then we're like. Holy shit, we got like 30 minutes of the show left. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how much and, – and, and it's like uh, uh, the brilliant comedian Jake Link pointed out. Y y what are you going to do when the jackets you know, come yeah. around? Yeah, we're like frantically looking up names of people. You know, it's bad when we're like, I got to Google, I got to Google, I got to Google. It's horrible. Oh, God. Thank God for Jake Link. I know, right? Oh, He's my new hero. He really is. He really is. He's uh, he, guy is awesome. Yeah, he's 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 uh, he's he's badass squared. Uh, just before we get in the news, there is a. All right, here here's the deal, guys. I said I was gonna post videos on YouTube during our podcast. The yep. problem is, when I encode the video, it doesn't always come out on YouTube for whatever reason. And it might have a lot to do with my inexperience or what have you. But it's edited correctly, and then for some reason. It doesn't take during the upload. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to show this clip because it's hysterical. It's a ho hockey shootout uh, inside the Czech Republic, which is a solid league over here in Europe. Yeah. And uh, the guy moves in, clearly hits the post with the referee right in front of it. The, 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 the goal, the, the puck pops out to, to, to the slot, and the referee points straight at the goal. <laughs> it calls it a goal. It gives No way. Oh, it's too funny. <laughs> That is a good time. Oh, Jesus. I am not a referee. A <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's the truth of my I'll tell you something. I, they need investigations of this game. I don't know. I mean, look, I guess you could blow a call, but this is just its spectacular. It is spectacular. In, in, in Soviet Russia. It's, well, it's the Czech Republic. It, they're not, they're, it, they're still they're a bunch of commies. I don't uh, care. No, no, I know. You're, 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 you're a man of the world, Dave. I am. Let's see. Let's what what have we hit on so far? Suicide, pedophilia, and now Soviets and commies. Right. We're on a fucking We're, roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on a roll. Yeah, I blame you for all the the. I have awesome. a fantastic story before we get into the news. No, go ahead, go ahead, go right ahead. And an omission as well. Okay. Um, as you know, I've been I've been into hockey for about three four years now. Yeah. Ironically, around the time the Blackhawks won the cup, I I don't know why. It you just could, happened. You haven't had a championship in Chicago in anything for well, except the White Sox. <laughs> oh, don't don't do that to me. Don't don't do that to me. That hurts my soul just saying it. Well, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, but I I living over here, I never really get a chance to watch games unless I stream them illegally. Legally, but you know what I mean. You don't see them. Your neighbor does. No, that. no, I don't Window. do that. I'm not saying that I did. But if I did, it would be really crappy quality, and I would get bored and not watch the entire thing because the quality is so bad, and I can't see the fucking puck. Yeah. So, uh, finally, I had a couple bucks of expendable income, so I went and I bought the uh, what you have, the NHL game ticket 
past like, things. I must. I might have to demand that for all hosts soon. So pretty damn awesome. It's Especially pretty awesome. Your poor ass has it. I know, right? <laughs> I was hoping someone would sponsor me, but it didn't happen. <laughs> so, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> all right. So your dumb story. I, I'm I'm watching the my first actual like game from beginning to end today. It's never happened before. I never. I watch condensed games, but I watched the game from beginning to end. No interruptions. And my daughter was watching it with me. And the first observation she made was, they could fight? And I was like, yeah. Right. And I realized that I was going to learn a lot more about the game because I was going to have to try to explain it to her, which I did. Let me tell you, man. I've been watching sports my entire life. Mm. Love sports. I've watched Super Bowls. I've watched World Series. I have never been so entertained watching a sporting event in my life as I was this morning. It's because it's an HD. <laughs> It's not just because it's just, hockey's just amazing, man. Amazing game. It, it it is. It's just there's always stuff going on. There's stuff to watch. The the announcers, the commentators, are some of the best and I've ever heard in sports. Yeah, and yeah. and these guys were homers, but that's okay. I like that well, too. Well, you know, uh, Mike Emmerich, New Jersey Devil, takes a lot of heat in, in for being a, a mark for the Rangers, and the Devil fans give Sam Rosen the same hard time. Who cares? They're supposed to be homers. It's, it's not. It's not supposed to be fair and balanced. And what they do is they split up these guys when they have national tele, uh, national broadcasts. And that's okay. And, and thanks for proving without a shadow of a doubt that I only have you on because you can talk, not because you're a hockey expert. Yeah, I, well, I mean, <laughs> people been listening and they know I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, not no, but, not with your one with your uh, when you earned your dead on Dave nickname. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. That was pretty badass. And I was right about the Kings, too. The Kings are kicking You out. might be right about the eight losses. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think I'm definitely going to be right about the eight losses. Holy Christmas. And, I you know, know, it's funny because they, play, they played uh, Columbus last night. Yeah. And uh, Columbus really took it. Decimated by injuries, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I know. They, they really got a rough deal. But they uh, they took it to the Blackhawks, and they had to pull it off. And the goalie, you know, let off a, what I thought was a soft goal in overtime. And, uh you know, yeah, the, the okay. cops, the Hawks kind of escaped that one, I would say. Did escape it, I agree, but we gave up a goal late, which has kind of been our MO this year. Uh, we seem to give up that late goal in the third period. I don't understand why. Maybe it's a fatigue thing. I don't know. But I found out two things. One, Crawford really needs to be in goal, and two, at Ray Emery's black. It blew my mind. Oh, I didn't know. God, man, thanks for <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I was like, black goalie? Fucking sweet. It was like when I watched Blazing Saddles for the first time. I was a like, black sheriff? It was awesome, man. All right, let me defend is- myself here with all your hockey fans. <laughs> I, Dave is a new hockey fan. He is a longtime sports guy. And um, he didn't know... Uh, um, I didn't know Ray Emery was black. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, because he's I don't like, look up, look like I don't a giant pixel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look up player cards. You know, what one like, of the great uh, NHL goaltenders of all time, Grant Fuhrer, was black, by the way. For them, instead of those... Uh, Grant those... Fuhrer was black? <laughs> Grant Fuhrer was black. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Was he really? Oh, God, I have... I know that name! You know, you know what's so ironic about this? Well, I mean, I can understand where you're coming through. So, <laughs> I have Dave on because he's amusing. He can speak without going, uh, every two seconds. Oh, and, um... He likes hockey. <laughs> He's no Pierre Maguire. I'm no, I'm no blah, 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 blah. Oh, Jesus. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. I, I find myself agreeing with Maguire more often lately. Yeah, I know that. It's like it's, the that some other things, too, but we won't get into this. We're dragging this. I'm getting better, though. I'm understanding the game a lot more. Yeah. Well, you, also, you know, and I will defend you on this. You have a excellent sense of sports momentum how it's switching where it's going and what have you and you don't need to be a hockey expert for that it helps but uh, you don't need to be any kind of hockey expert for that but your predictions last year in the playoffs were dead on and uh i mean you called the rain you you picked the devils over the rangers right yeah i did did you i don't yeah. know we'll have to go back on that one yeah i did you did, I, I you did. so i mean yeah whatever all right let's get in to the uh hockey i'm not calling it nhl news of the week because I might just talking in. If there's something goofy happening in the KHL, I might bring it up. Yeah, well, you never know when a condor is going to swoop in and fuck up everyone's day. So it's just hockey news. God, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> uh oh, old man needs a glasses. You think you could hold the show by yourself before we go into I, news? I could hold the show like I hold my jock, baby. All right, you you're up. I'm getting my glasses. All right. See, while Tommy's going to get his glasses, I'm going to tell you why he needs glasses. If you don't know this already, Tommy C is old as fuck. 
He might sound like he's a young man, but he's a crusty old, crackly old man. And that's just reality. While I have the microphone and I'm tickling your ear vaginas, let me do a couple more ramblings and musings about the world of hockey that I love. Man, this is really taking a long time. I'm sorry, people. I'm doing my best. You see, for me, this is a really low time of year. Just baseball, spring training. I needed something. And the Blackhawks are so damn good, it makes it really interesting to love them. He's going to have to cut all of this because I'm sure everyone's like, oh, man, this is we need a nap. Where is his glasses? Did he have to make the glasses? They're better not. Uh, it's looking it, like I can't use my glasses. <laughs> Did you, are you trying to make? Are you fabricating a new pair of glasses? I can't find my glasses. Oh, my God. This is horrible. Oh, geez. This one is like approaching middle age. Socks. <laughs> Tommy's going through menopause. Yeah, well, this is going to be a rough news. <laughs> what, you can't read? Yeah. <laughs> just just try to explain it as best you can. Oh, Jesus. Look at the blotches and see what you think uh, is going on. Yeah. If they have pictures, you should be okay. X, Y, Z, K, L. <laughs> yeah. Describe what's going on in the pictures. All right, maybe we have to bring Andy. Andy, do you know where my glasses are? <laughs> no. Oh, this is... What kind of German are you? You're supposed to be organized. I know, right? What the hell? Oh, Oh, shit. I hope that didn't get hot. (laughs) I heard heard something. Uh, It said something to do with slavery and not being one. (laughs) Slavery or not being involved with one. We're we're really raising the bar. Yeah, you're not really mad at me, are you? (laughs) Oh, good. (laughs) No, I'm just simply explaining to to fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not getting you shit, you dumb oh, old fuck. God, I can't believe I forgot my glasses. All right. Uh, wave of concussions hit the NHL. Oh, by the way, let's do this. Hockey. Well, do your intro. You mean like you want me to go, hockey news? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you. cigarettes are in. Cigarettes. Because we, we promote health uh, conscious. You know. I, I can't smoke anything. I tried smoking weed. I almost died from it. Oh, you get- I'm allergic to yeah. I'm allergic to all smoke. It must be great not to work and say talking about smoking weed and stuff. It must be. Great. It is pretty sweet. I can pretty much do what I want. It must be great. All right, here's hockey news. And a wave of NHL concussions uh, for the last two seasons. Concussions and hits. And- I tell you, concussions have been happening a lot longer than the last. No, few I know. Years. It's like it happened overnight. <laughs> and you have to know that this article is coming out simply because you've Getty Malkin got a concussion. Yeah. You know, if Joe Schmo from Idaho got one, we wouldn't be talking about it. That it's- rhyme. That was impressive. What's that? That rhyme, that whole thing you just said was Joe that's Schmo from Idaho. That's a wonderful. Jersey thing. I'm just saying, that was pretty sweet. Well, that's brilliant. Well, you've got a uh, Malkin got a concussion, so therefore we, the NHL has a concussion problem. But yep. and you both know the <laughs> NHL doesn't have a concussion problem. Uh, contact sports in general have concussion problems. And uh, the NHL, since uh, I can remember in the late 90s, as me and Jay have talked about in the last show, uh, did you know you get concussions sometimes when you, when you play a sport like uh, – you know, hockey. <laughs> so when you get hit in the head, things happen to your brain? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, That's amazing. Sometimes it does. And uh, despite the NHL's best efforts to deal with this, and I do believe the NHL and the NFL, for that matter, have done their best efforts. They, these articles keep coming out. And what these articles um, are intended to do, it's supposed to give you an idea that, A, they've never happened before. They did. They just didn't know it. What happened when you used to get a concussion in the old days is like, hey, you okay? Yeah, coach. Rub some, rub some ice on it. Yeah, rub some ice on it. Or, hey, you okay? Uh, bugs and bees and butterflies. All right, sit down, kid. You know that's what used to happen. But if you get, look, they make you count to ten, and if you get seven of the numbers right, you're going back in the game. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's all you got to do. And it's not because people were mean. No, it was because, or they didn't know, and they take it seriously now. I, I think you can't just you can't with the concussion thing. The NHL doesn't even allow you just to say, "Hey, all right, coach, I'm okay." They, they don't allow it. And this is the part. I agree with that. Because they're yeah. starting to learn this stuff does a lot more damage. Although I've yet to meet the punch drug hockey player. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've run into the... Uh, Suter's, Suter's close, though. Yeah, it's, well, he's up there. Oh, but, well, <laughs> Suter's close. Well, we're, we're winning games now. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get the Blackhawks in the first round and eliminate them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, a, that's a scary scenario for you guys. They're, they're the sixth seed now. I think they're going to rise as high as you maybe. You better the hope they win. I don't why. That's the last. I'm not worried. You think anybody's going to touch the Blackhawks in a seven game series right now? It's not going to happen. We'll get into that later. 
So uh, the oh. NHL uh, is, uh, like I said, we, we mentioned Pat LaFontaine's helmet, the uh, things. And, you know, a lot of the study on CTE and things like this are new. And the uh, three suicides we had in 2011, uh, two of the three of them were drug-related uh, as far as – but for somehow hockey got the blame. So whenever a star player if, – if, if Kane goes out with a – uh, a concussion for a few days, then the NHL has a problem. Wait, no, they they're not going to care about Kane because Kane's not sexy enough, apparently. You know, and was, he doesn't I, get he, he doesn't get any credit. You don't think so? I think he's one of the superstars in the NHL. Yeah, but he, like you don't hear his name talked about in that elite level, like on ESPN. You never like finally, Barry Mer- Barry Melrose is finally starting to. Well, he likes the Hawks anyway, but. Mm. They're really starting to cover the Hawks more. Sir, yeah. I disagree with you. I think he's one of the elite players behind Sissy Crosby and uh, Alexander. Uh, I'm too lazy to play hockey, all Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I agree. I think he's definitely one of the top five, six players in the league. Without a doubt. I don't. But, I think you're insane. I think you have like a like a like a New Jersey Devils con uh, Napoleon complex. The guy's a guy's a beast. He's a beast, but I'm not saying he's not. I'm saying he doesn't get the the, the recognition for it as some of these other names. The NHL pushes him, um, maybe maybe because he beat up that cab driver. I, I that's what I was about to say. I don't think I think that's purposely they have not pushed him yeah. as one of those top stars like Malkin and Crosby and Ovechkin because they're still punishing him from that event, and that's quite possible. Yeah, he's uh, he's a little wild. I'll be honest with you. He's, 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 he's calmed down a hell of a lot. Oh yeah, well you know punching a cab driver over a two dollar tip. You know, God, that was like four years ago. Leave it alone. Yeah, he was only a cat. Well, if he, if he didn't play so well in 2010 in the Olympics, I, I think I'd be bashing him right now. But he does seem like a good kid, and what he did was reprehensible. But I mean, I hope I hope that's not the reason they're pushing him down. He's he's a beast on the. On There's the a lot of guys in the NFL, MLB, and NBA that have done a lot worse stuff than that. You know? we, got, we got basketball players, top basketball players that have raped motherfuckers. I know. And then we have. Yeah. Uh, I just burped on fucking live TV. We are. That's awesome. Um, is- and we also, you know, we also have murders in the NFL. So I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to soften the blow. I like, him, no. and I think he's already apologized and dealt with it. So let's move on. I, yeah. Yeah. NHL tough guy culture is resisting Kevlar socks. We of course know about the Eric Carlson incident with Matt Cook. Uh, there is a solution to the problem. They are called Kevlar socks. The problem is, and. As his article stating, it's the tough guy culture that's resisting him. Uh, how much you want to bet the guy that wrote this article doesn't skate? <laughs> probably, I, I would take the odds. Yeah, he probably doesn't skate. I have yet to see these Kevlar stocks. I don't know what they do. I don't necessarily think they're a bad idea. But what happens is when you are a professional, you need every single edge. Even though the smallest thing can keep you out of the game. And if these guys feel that this slows down their skating, which is... Even in the least, in the least, they're they're going to go out the door and they're going to gamble. Especially since our, you know, we have to, you know, look at Carlson's injury. It was kind of a freak. It's a flu. It doesn't look something like that doesn't happen every day. Would, yeah, I I think it was an attempt to trip. You know, yeah. I think that that was the idea. I'm embarrassed by missing the uh, the hit, so uh, you know, I'm I'm going to trip. I'm going to trip Carlson up, and uh, that would be good for a defenseman to get tripped up in his own zone. Yeah. Uh, he managed to do more than that, and he sent an apology. Yeah, he did. Yeah, a little too late. Yeah, sorry, I almost sliced your friggin' ankle artery open. You know, fuck. like a wiki emoticon. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Sorry, bro. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, well, yeah. So uh, they're resisting it. Uh, the, the article says a tough guy called. I, I, I would argue. I don't know if that's the case. That's pretty stupid if it is. I'll be honest, but it's probably not the case. But I think this this plays into my my theory about the. Uh, we're, we're trying to, you know, feminize men. And, of course. Uh, uh, you know, act, we're going to pretend that all concussions are not a part of sports. Uh, no, it's, it's got to be scary. If it's, it's not scary, scary yeah, enough, it's not going to write yeah. about it. <laughs> these guys, these NHL players are so stupid that they won't play where these things from guys that don't skate. And we're going to act like uh, we have injury problems uh, that we don't. No, it's, the, the injuries aren't any, they're different than they were, probably because they know about them. Yeah. You know, they know that these they 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 know injuries. That science moves on, but you know, you know, people looking for reason to um, disparage hockey and contact sports, which I think is yeah, contact sports in general. Yeah, it's 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 unfortunate. Dave, because I'm gonna say it. I haven't said it in past episodes. This is about attacking masculinity. Of course it is. This is this is what this is really about. This is of course it is. This is attack. We're being pushed down by the estrogen of America. Yeah. I well, I don't. 
I wouldn't say it's a woman's conspiracy because most of the douches that write these articles are men. But I being controlled by women. I think uh, the typical the culture that we spent our twenties in, uh, the, an army culture, which tends to be more macho, right? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, there's a lot of girls that can hang in that. Oh yeah, that we know of. And I think uh, they want to push guys like that out. And I think I know why they want to push guys like that out because they guys like that tend to stand up and say this yeah. is wrong. And with a president says that I'm not a dictator, he doesn't want guys like that speaking up to him. So we'll neuter their sports. <laughs> Every single one of them. You keep the going with this stuff. That, that it's. I don't think this is a women thing. I really don't. I, I'm, well, I'm going to blame this. women because I'm going to blame women because I have a penis. No. And Oops. I want. My, I. I'm just saying. I'm not I'm blaming saying. women. I'm blaming. I, I. I just. I don't want my country to turn into Germany. I want it to be truly diverse. I like yeah. to see a warrior class and an intellectual class and a different type. I, I, I like the diversity. They, it, the people that are running our country now seem to think that um, if everybody's going to college and if everybody uh, goes the, uh, the same route, like they have in Germany, I mean, if you don't go to college, you're, you're basically screwed for the rest of your life. Yeah. That is not the case in the United States. No, it's and not. That, that there's, uh, well, it's getting more and more, less and less every year, but uh, there, there are other options you can take. And because uh, a lot of people like myself, I don't like corporate culture. I, I'm not comfortable around it. I want to be around kind of middle class, working class people. And I don't necessarily fit in. Yeah. With that crowd, and it's not for everybody. But they, like in Germany, they've convinced the, the entire population, uh, and the only thing close to a warrior class they have uh, is is basically like sort of a soccer, uh, the, the soccer. And we know how tough those guys are. Yeah, uh, well, the hooligans at least. And uh, so we're so I don't think it's conspiracy against women. I think this is a, a conspiracy, not not even like a, a planned conspiracy. Like we're going in a back room, but I think this is a a, a group of people that think that if we didn't have contact sports, that men would just kind of calm down and they can be controlled. And, uh, exactly. You know, we'll have That's what I was about to say, too. I was about to, I was, I, I was waiting for my opening. Yeah. Uh, because I was going to say, I'm going to get serious for a second, because I don't actually believe the whole woman conspiracy I thing. It was, a, it was a goof. But reality is, they want to push down masculinity because, yes, a, a weaker man is easier to control. And that's and it's not even just about men. They want a weaker society in general. They don't want women to be attracted to that working class. Yeah, that's why they started want, the whole they, beta male is it, thing. Let's face it. Who gets the girls in school? Jocks. Yeah, yeah jocks. Jocks get girls well, in school. Cause, that's why they've been trying to phase so out. You know why? And by the way, I was, I was 150 pounds when I graduated high school at 6'1". All right. So <laughs> imagine what that looked like. Know, right? They look like men. It's normal. Yeah. They look like guys. They look closer like guys. But what's funny is about you know when they're about twenty two and they're all almost finishing over the hill, <laughs> guys like me start looking better. <laughs> well, you, you notice something else they started doing about ten years ago too. They started uh, vi uh, villainizing, uh, vilifying the alpha male. Yeah, th I think this is that's my whole point. I think yeah. we're vilif This is an attempt to cool down the contest because we want to vilify. The alpha male, and I think, and, and beta males have come to the forefront. You know, yeah. the more meeker male, the nice guy. Yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. There's a balance to everything. Sure. But I'm not. It, by the way, I, I'm glad you said it. I'm not saying that everybody has to be an athlete to be a good person. Of course, there's a place for everyone. Absolutely. But you know, it's it, it seems like uh, the like thinkers, and especially some of them are sitting in the White House, want to streamline yeah. our culture. Everybody is the same because everybody has to perform for this new system that's coming. We're moving on. The only warrior class they want is the one on their payroll. Yeah. And that's go. Yeah. Bingo. And yeah, go. That's reality. Yeah. You know what? F you. And you know and you know what? I'm trying not to make this political as far as like a left and right thing, but I think everybody knows who and what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. At age 77, Willie O'Ree has no plans to slow down. And uh, here's the thing about Willie O'Ree that you might find interesting, Dave, because uh, – Well, first, can you tell me who Willie O'Ree is? Yeah, 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 O'Ree, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even no, say the I name mean, right. It wouldn't make much of a difference to you because you stream hockey games. And then when he played hockey, I guess they were in black and white if they were on television at law. Willie O'Ree is considered the Jackie Robinson of the National Hockey League in uh, 19 – I can't read because it's a. Fifty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Willie O'Ree brought the color barrier with the Boston Bruins. Ask wow. O'Ree if he likes being called the Jackie Robinson of hockey. 
Here's Julio Ruiz quote. The media called me that. I never said that I was Jackie Robinson. I did not have to go through the racism and prejudice and bigotry that Mr. Robinson went through. Ori told NHL.com. But it was there. Having slurs and racial remarks directed towards you, not only by players, but in fans in the stands. I let it go in one ear and out the other. I just wanted to play hockey and the best of my ability. A clap, clap to Willie O'Ree. And I'm well first, said, sir. You know what? He's probably being humble. Let's face it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm sure he put up with a lot of shit because there's a lot of shit bags out there. Uh, but Dave wouldn't know because he wouldn't be able to tell if he was white or black. You know? No, I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know Grant Fuhrer was black. <laughs> Blew my fucking mind when he told me that. PK Subban is too. Oh wow. He's African Canadian. That's unbelievable. I'm glad. I mean, it's not like it's unbelievable in a bad way. It's just I, I, I just don't know them too many I, brothers I, I, play hockey. I'm absolutely ecstatic that you got Game Center, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm, I am more than excited. It's been great. I've been, and I'm not just watching Hawks game either. I'm watching, every, I'm watching all hockey, and it's great that my daughter loves watching it too. Oh well, that, that's fun. She, man, she, she's like, they're fighting, they're fighting. I go, yeah, I know. Yeah, they're really she's like, they could do that. I'm like, yes, they can. Yes, they can. Well, they, they, there's a penalty for it, but yeah, I, I try to explain all that to her too. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> it's not easy because her eyes get all really, big. As you, well. you, you, like the thing about the NHL, you just throw all like human rules and logic right out the window <laughs> for this one game, which I like. <laughs> yep. Uh, Dougie makes him a self at home in the NHL. Dougie Hamilton, a lot of talk about this, uh, the the new phenom, Dougie Hamilton. Of course, I'm going to have to stumble through this because I don't have my glasses. Can't read for fucking shit. Uh, yeah, the thing about Dougie Hamilton, is he's playing very well. Is he a rookie? I can't say. Yeah, he's pretty much a rookie. And the funny thing is, it, you know, people call him Dougie Hamilton, and all the uh, announcers have to kind of apologize to the crowd. It's like, look, I'm not calling him Dougie because he's my buddy. That name... <laughs> D O U G I E Hamilton. God given name. <laughs> I, I I had I had a roommate in the army, and he said his name was uh, J D. I was like, "What does it stand for?" It doesn't stand for anything. <laughs> it's like, my name's J D, asshole. <laughs> what is it, like, Todd Davidson or, or... <laughs> it's J D? Just I've that... done that with people who are J R. I've done that before. <laughs> It's, it's like, so, well, so you're a junior? Say, John, can I call you John? <laughs> He's like, no, it's JD. He's like, it's J and D. <laughs> so what you're telling me is you spell it with a J and a fucking D. <laughs> I think he went on some kind of rant. Like, oh, you Yankees, they are North. You know, you gotta make fun of us. Oh, so We're... his name wasn't JD. It was JD. Exactly. Okay, got it. Apparently. There's a big difference there. We need to explain that. Ball. I didn't know. I thought like gay names like TJ, JDJ. I thought they were short for something, and they're kind of cool. Oh no! In the in the south, that, that the name could totally be JD. Because you can't come up with a name, or you can't spell it. A little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, it, it's like Jake Blink says. We're not probably having too many Latinos, and probably not too many Southerners either. So we can talk how we want, I suppose. Exactly. We can offend as many of the people who aren't listening as we like. Nobody went to Thrasher's game in Atlanta. <laughs> No surprise there. Nobody went to Thrasher's games. We're, we're out of luck. Oh, we love the South. No, we don't. I, I personally, I love, all the shows I'm watching right now are all like in in uh, New Orleans. Yeah, I, I love the I love the South culture. I'd love to go like kill me some squirrels and eat them and stuff. Yeah, you know, times. <laughs> I'd live off the land, man. Yeah. I could be a mountain man. Or whatever or, car hits. Yeah, basically. Well, I don't drive, so whatever my wife hit, yeah. I will go pick up. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we can still savage something here. We can we can make something out of this. Go get it, JD. <laughs> go get it, JD. <laughs> you think that they named him JD because they couldn't spell, or or is it, maybe it was their favorite drink? Is that a JD's a drink? I think just put it this way. He was one of twelve children. What? One of the from whoa yeah, I mean, they ran out of names. I don't know. <laughs> they just went down the <laughs> alphabet at that point. They ran out of names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was a he was a trip. I think you know this guy by the way, but I just don't want to go into it because it's oh uh, yeah, well, oh, it's a yeah, lot I, deeper I, I, than this. All I can tell you is the guy who spins. And that's oh yeah, I'll tell you that I he was my room, first roommate in the army. Go I ahead, see. that's a story in itself, man. <laughs> It's just, yeah, the guy who spins. 
Thank you. All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, did you hear Mike Mulberry go on a ridiculous rant against Alexander Ovechkin? Uh, yes, I, I read about it. And uh, I got to be honest, I was all ready to get mad at Mulberry, but uh, I, they showed some video. He, he's, he's, he's a lazy hockey player, yeah, or at least he is now. I think I called that at the uh, that that it, the effort wasn't there. Yeah, and that's concerning, okay. and that makes Sidney Crosby look like a hero in my eyes. If that's the case, with all that talent. Wow, I know that was hard for you to say. Yeah, sure. Sissy Crosby, uh, <laughs> Sissy Crosby. He, you know, everybody says he can't fight. So when you're down looking at a puck for a faceoff, he'll throw a punch and drop the gloves. Try to feel it. <laughs> He's you gonna probably win me. the MVP. You don't believe again. me? Go to hockeyfights.com and check that one out. Yeah, I know. So I saw that. Oh wow, look at Sidney Crosby. He's sticking up for himself. He sucker punched a guy. You sucker punch a guy. That's your boy. I don't like him. Don't, don't and, talk uh, bad about uh, your man I'm like that. that. Ovechkin can't fight, but at least he was kind of tough, and he he's not playing in his own zone. And it's uh, it, this was from earlier in the week in a game versus the Flyers, February twenty second. And uh, yeah, it was on Wednesday. And uh, Milbury, I, I hope, rightfully trashes, rightfully trashes a guy that's making serious money. And uh, yeah. I don't think he loves hockey as much as he used to, and I think that's what it comes down to. You know, you think maybe the, the lockout took the passion out for him? You think maybe all the business bullshit has gotten to him? You think that's a possibility? It's time to go. You're right. You're right to begin with. I'm not sure. I don't think they're going to let him go because it's, it's – I mean, his own owner's bashing him in the media. Yeah, that's not I, good. I don't know if that's such a smart move. But, I don't know. The, I, mean, I, I do know. have to kiss his ass to play hockey. I agree. And here's what I know about Washington sports. Washington, D.C. sports, this is what I know about them. When you lose the media, mm. you're fucking done in that place. Yeah. You do, it, it Very rarely does an athlete, once they are completely lost by not just the team and the media, it's done. It's time to go. There's just no there's no coming it's back from it. sports town. Well, the, you know, they, they're a good sports town. They're a terrible sports town, except for the... No, no, I, they have a lot of... they get The legacy in Washington, D.C., like the fans love their sports there. Do they? Oh, God, yeah. They're, pop- they're rabid they're, sports guys. I think they're, a lot of the media gets swallowed up by the, just the, the you know, it's, it's a political town. You know? if, you need, if you need any further proof of how good of a sports town it really is, look how quickly the Washington Nationals have been turned around and how the fan base has come out to oh, support right. them. The Redskins the same way. They've gotten behind Robert Griffin III, your favorite football yeah, player. Yeah, really. Yeah. Lord Robert Griffin Lord III. Robert Griffin III. I didn't even, I didn't know he was black when we first did that show last <laughs> I don't feel as How bad can I now. See you he's he's Sir, Sir Robert Griffin the Third. That's Old quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get a name like that? I mean, we should we should find somebody who has a name just so we could say it in an awesome way. Yeah, well, I like Robert Griffin. He's his man's man, and he, he is when he was probably shouldn't have too, because that's what that's yeah. too. And, and he's, it looks like he's on track to, to start the season. So, But, of course, the, N- the NFL season is still like seven months away. But. I zoomed in. Now I can see and read. <laughs> oh, there you go. NHL realignment. There's a lot of talk oh. about this. Uh, let me start this oh. uh, uh, article by Greg Wyshynski of Puck Daddy. Uh, everyone seems rather pleased with the geography of the NHL realignment of closer, which means, of course, the National Hockey League Players Association will probably derail it. Derail it. Oh, boy. I need the glasses. It, yep. Uh, if it's just too just bright. Ah, God, I don't want to. It's, 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 I really got to remember my glasses next time. Uh, uh, here, here's, here's the proposal. Let's get down to the meat of this mother effer. And the proposal is four divisions with uh, eight teams and two with seven teams. The top three teams in each division will qualify for the Stanley Cup playoffs. I don't know if I like that. Uh, I don't, the next I don't teams, like any of that. All right, all right. The next two teams with the highest post totals in their conference will qualify for the playoffs. Like it's com- that's complicated. It's like You've got to have a NFL. freaking calculus degree to figure this shit out. Which means one division could have three playoff teams while the other has five. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. I, I don't like this. Here's why it gets. Here's where it gets a little com- complicated. The fourth and fifth place teams in one division can both qualify for the playoffs, and the club with fewer points who would play the higher seed in number one uh. in the conference. As an example, using the current standings as proposed by realignment, Montreal, Boston, Ottawa would be 
in Pittsburgh, New Jersey. Pittsburgh, New Jersey, Philadelphia would be in. Toronto and Detroit would be the other two playoff teams. But I hope the. You know what? I'm I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. You, this is a bad idea. You yeah, know, I, I really like the old way when it was called the Patrick Division and the Camel Conference and what have you. I, I think there's anything wrong with that. And you did have to come out of your division. This is way too complicated. And Absolutely. when they did switch it to, to the basketball Eastern Western Conference, at least you know it's the top eight teams in the conference. doesn't matter where. Because the divisions mean nothing. We all yeah. know that. We, they, 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 well, they're there for rivalry reasons only. Yeah, that's it. And it works. And you know what? It does. It sounds like a nightmare. It is. And you know what the biggest problem with this whole realignment thing is? Mm. They're going to move Detroit out of Chicago's division. They're breaking up the oldest rivalry in the fucking game. That's brilliant. What are they thinking? Should move them to Winnipeg. That's another there thing. You you know, I'm, I'm looking at this too. Like, move to Arizona. Winnipeg, Winnipeg doesn't seem to have a. They, they don't have a good scenario no matter what. I mean, it, Winnipeg's just they're they're going to be traveling. Yep. You know, Chris Kreider sent back to the NHL. Uh, former uh, New York Rangers playoff hero. So it hasn't Woo! hasn't been really getting it done. He got sent down to the AHL. Uh, but he's back up. No, he's he's well. Unless you got a later article than me, he seems. Like, oh no, I thought you just said he got sent back. Sent up. to sent yeah sent back to the AHL. Oh, he got sent I should, down. I should enunciate when I'm doing radio and not talk. Sent down. That's not good. Yeah, he yeah. sent down. Uh, of course, we all know him as the playoff hero. Of course, scored a lot of key goals for the Rangers that really kept them, that got them into the um, Easter Conference. You were loving that kid. I still do. I think this yeah. is normal. I think that, you know, there was a hell of a spot we put him in, and then this is a. Uh, um, this, this, this is normal. You bounce up and down when you're 22, all of 22 years old. You know, we'll have to check the tape, but I think you actually called this uh, last year. Yeah, I did. Don't be surprised. I think you back. called. Well, this. sometimes guys get hot, and you yeah. know what? They don't. They don't. They didn't really have like a reading on this guy or a scouting report on this guy. Maybe they got one, sort of yeah. like they seem to have one on Ovechkin. Yeah. Finally figured him out. Uh, I don't think anyone figured Ovechkin out. He just doesn't care anymore. Uh, let's see what else they say about Give this. It's you know, it it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a fluke. You know, so I mean, uh, and he, like I said, they scored some key goals, and uh, you know, he did get hurt early in the season. But this, you know, look, if you're Russia guy, you, know, you could make the argument that he shouldn't have been in those games. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. The Rangers went deep, but uh, you know, and, and he, he's ridiculously fast. Um, no, but he he does seem to be. You don't even hear his name much when you watch Ranger games. But we yeah. wish Chris Kreider the best of luck, and we we love. We Chris do. Kreider. I hope speedy return to the NHL, young man. Uh, we love Chris Kreider on the on the um, shot from the point because Chris Kreider was a lot of a reason we had like a lot of excitement last year and a lot to talk about on this dumb show. It was a good story. Yeah. Now we're talking about the fact that we can't ad- and that by African Americans from yeah. Uh, 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 th- thanks, thanks, Dave. Hey, I'm here for you, buddy. I'm doing what I can. Doing my little part to bring can, a little bit of me. I think I think uh, I think we're putting Jay on now. <laughs> See if he's around. Oh wait, it's only <laughs> five o'clock in the morning in the states. <laughs> or who are replacing me or you, Mister yeah. No Actually, Energy? Actually, move. <laughs> I'll just edit. <laughs> I wouldn't blame. I wouldn't blame you for replacing me. I'm horrible. Uh, you're fine. Pretty much in every facet of life. Yeah. Well, I was. I'm just the pedophile joke was killer. It was awesome. It wasn't a pedophile joke. You asked who would watch the league. I gave you an answer. You started off with pedophiles and suicide. I started nothing. You started suicide. Because <laughs> yeah, I le- why you 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 sabotage my show <laughs> I with a pedophile I joke that doesn't to. work. And then I start thinking about suicide. It's a natural I progression thing. I was to be the hero. I set the bar extremely low, hoping to <laughs> come in and save the day. Well, we'll see. When this gets <laughs> off the cutting room floor, we'll see. <laughs> that, yeah, the you problem go, is now I have to leave it in because we. Yes, I, because you keep talking about it. I'm gonna cut it. I, I was hoping you were gonna cut it. Yeah, when you I keep about it. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> it's like it's, I'm stuck uh, in the forefront of my mind. NHL. We talked about this Jake last week on the NHL news. NHL uh, uh, Sharks suspend Ryan Klo for two games for leaving the bench to start a fight, uh, but that he did not get. This is the bizarre part. Klo did not get the automatic ten game misconduct that, or the ten game suspension. Uh, the issue was needed to determine whether or not he left the bench illegally to engage Thaw. No potential suspension. 
uh, oh, no, a potential 10-game suspension held in the balance after pleading his case to Brendan Shanahan and the company was determined that Chloe would be sitting for two games. So he managed to weasel his way out of that, even though case you can't. Case by case. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, the NHL rules are subjective. And uh, just go back to um, the Max Pacioretty hit from Zidane Ochara in 2011 when a star gives maybe the, the second ugliest incident I've ever seen in hockey. Uh, drives his head into the boards, and he wasn't suspended because he was a star, and the Bruins went on to win the Stanley Cup. We saw that a lot in the playoffs last year, too, where it, it, it really is, um, I think, more than any other sport uh, out there. It's a, it's a case-by-case basis. Yes, and it's a star-by-star basis, apparently. It is. So, yes. you know, uh, who's Ryan Klo? I mean, he, he even spoils his name kind of funny. I, everybody I know named Ryan was R-Y-A-N, right? Yeah. Well, his name is R-Y-A-N-E. Oh, see, he he he's he, he's an innovator. Yeah, well, his parents were. Well, he might have just changed it himself. He's like, I'm gonna throw this e on there. How about this, bitches? Oh, wait for this pronunciation nightmare. Ugh. All right, Dave. What's up? Do the Harlem Shake. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! No, no. I was hammer time. I'm, I'm really sick. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think I was hammer time. Yeah, well, oh, oh. Uh, I. <laughs> West Mound West Anka hockey parents win apology for Harlem Shake punishments. Oh, yeah. Basically, those dopey kids. It's funny how things work out when you're rich. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you have money. Let me read this friggin' article. It comes from uh, Rochelle Austin of the Star Tribune. In- Is this the one with the over-sexualized shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Mound, Mound West Anka. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of name? Is it? That's got to be a quasi-English American Indian name. Madam Wisconsin superintendent apologized Monday night for the suspensions to six of his varsity hockey players hours before a playoff game, telling the crowd of angry parents, rabble, rabble, rabble. Clarence? Parents? <laughs> parents? I need glasses. And the school activities director have been put on leave pending an investigation and incident. The meeting of some 250 people... <laughs> 250 people attending a regular board session cheered loudly at the news. Oh, my God. This is on me, said Superintendent Kevin Borg. Oh, my God. Oh, Borg. <laughs> he what the hell? said uh, that he expected to lay out a plan for the investigation on Tuesday. Parents and students who spoke Monday said they didn't blame Borg for the suspensions. Instead, uh, connecting their fire on the activity directors, Dion Colts, K-O-L-T-E-S, I guess. The two-day suspensions were handed out for the hockey players joined. You know, it was originally reported that they were out of the team and out of the playoffs. And now, all of a sudden, yeah. two-day hockey suspension. Uh, joined by two members of the swim team, performed a version of the Harlem Shake, an internet sensation. Where they raped each other with hockey sticks, basically. That's hot. Hey, maybe that's the league <laughs> you're talking about, you know. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the, there's the demographic, see? <laughs> It'll work. <laughs> Holy school shit. Lunch, in the school's lunchroom. Wait a minute, is this the same Harlem Shake? Oh, man, That's we might have to find room. this one. That was a locker room. Here's, here's, here's what gets me. All right, uh, so this has got to be a different situation because we know damn well that was in a... We, that was in a um... This is the one with the kid with the sock on his dong, right? Oh, I guess not. They said it was in the lunchroom <laughs> on Friday. Uh, they, didn't oh learn from the kid. they didn't learn from the kid with the sock on his dong. <laughs> <laughs> they got a sock on his dog. I about lost it. I love sock cock, man. <laughs> Those kids are now a part of my Twitter uh, profile picture. <laughs> my pictures. Oh, my God. Twitter. I'm thinking about it. It's making it's me laugh funny. too hard. It's too Because it was Ooh. funny. But it wasn't worth the playoffs. But it was like, the students was the just get this. Have you ever heard of this shit? The students were issued $75 citations. What? By the police. For engaged oh, in riot-like behavior. Holy shit. This is a different story. This is a different story. I probably should have read it before I went on the air. <laughs> Maybe you should have read it a little or sent it to me or something. <laughs> the hockey players were stripped the opportunity to play in the sexual quarterfinal last night, which the team lost. Ah, gone. Ending a promising seating. On Monday, the parents stepped up to the microphone to complain about the rush to judgment and a lack of due process. Well, it's a school it's a school. If you want to talk about the lack of due progress, talk to the friggin' police department because that's ridiculous, riot-like behavior. For the students capturing on the video, 
taking in the dance performance. Well, I, it's interpretive dance at best, um, which is a part <laughs> at best, which which is a part of a class project. The students can be seen dancing on tables, but no vandalism reported. Only damage seemed to be to a broken lunch tray. Many of those who spoke were emotional, including Mike Curty, who appeared on the verge of tears. Oh, God, I hate that. Oh, hair. come on. Ugh. Back up, Kato. kids fell down and broke their head, he'd be crying for something different. Where was the school? But no, his kid got suspended from the playoffs, so he's like, my kid couldn't play. <laughs> He'll never have the joy of playoff high school hockey. Oh, man. I found him in the parking lot, kicked out of the building. He couldn't go back in until I escorted him. It sounds like a massive overreaction by the school, which is what we do nowadays. It's what we do to everything. Because we're going to neuter everybody, especially. But we can't fix a problem, so we just overreact to it and try to scare the population. Uh, yeah, we overreact to it because, you know, it's. It, I, I said, I think I wrote something really brilliant. I said, uh, something has, something, the word something must be done is the currency given by the frightened. Yeah. To people who don't have their best interest. So yeah. that's what we do. We overreact to everything because we go, something must be done. Something so, must be done. People say something must be done when they don't know what to do. But I, yeah. And when I hear something must be done, I think, wow, that's a really great, if I was a politician, this would be a really great group to take advantage of. Right. We need to start – I can fix everybody's problems. We need to start punishing our kids with capital punishment, more spankings, yeah. and less time out. Harlem Shake that, bitches. Let's start there. If these kids would have had socks on their dongs, they wouldn't have got suspended. Very true. <laughs> more dong socks, and we'll be happy with life. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? On Sunday, the parents received a call from the district uh, saying that the suspensions have been cut in half, even though they're out of the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the one game was all that was needed. It's like getting promoted to sergeant when you get killed in combat. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, no, no, it's, it's like my promotion. I got promoted to my E5 on my last day in the Army. They're like, as I was leaving, hey, job, like, here you, <laughs> here you go. Here's your E5. I'm like, and I, and I wore it with pride. Yeah, you did. But I know it's a, I didn't wear a uniform for I like called the you for one day for, to make, your, make you happy. It was a good time. It was a good time. As before the meeting with Borg, $75 fines would be rescinded and suspension reversed. The parents also said they want an incident removed from their children's records. What record? What <laughs> record? Well, I guess with the police. Oh, okay. With the police, Super Ted covered by data privacy laws. Okay. Nightmare. Fucking parent. That is a nightmare. I'm not like this. I'm, this is not the kind of parent I am, and I refuse to be. And you know what? I, I, I hope my daughter grows up to find a guy that's intelligent and um, is not afraid to be a dude. Yeah. I there's really, nothing I hope, wrong with I really a hope. Dude. I mean, you know, I really, I just, I, I, I'd have, ugh, disgusting. Match Pacioretty is in discipline for his hit on Ryan McDonough. This game was going on during our last uh, Shop on the Point broadcast with Jake. Um, McDonough came up from behind Pacioretty, who's really riled, probably still even from the, uh, the, the char hit in 2011, which we just previously mentioned, and gave him a dirty hit uh, from behind. Um, he wasn't hurt, but it could have been ugly. So Pacioretty responds with a, a clear check behind the net, uh, right on the numbers. Uh, McDonough's done for the game uh, after that. It was, it was vengeful. It was, it was disgusting. And, of course, he didn't get disciplined for it. Uh, maybe because they were throwing him a bone because it's charred to get disciplined two years ago. Uh, yeah. It was deliberate. If you wanted to make the case that both guys could be suspended, I'd, I'd go for that. And, and in an age where the NHL is trying to learn, we care so much about headshots, which I think they do, uh, yeah. this kind of stuff is dumb. You either commit the fa foul or you don't commit the foul. It's not that, well, McDonough did it to you, so when you did it back to him, uh, which was a lot worse and a lot more intentional, if you can be more intentional... <laughs> I, di I didn't know we were going back to an eye for an eye in, so, in the NHL. Hey, hey, look, look, you hit him in the numbers, you hit him in the numbers. I wouldn't be surprised if if, Patch if, if McDonough was, was hit, which I don't think was deliberate, the uh, Pacioretty hit was So we don't discipline McDonough. We don't discipline Pacioretty, and we just told the uh, players you won't be disciplined if somebody does a dirty hit. You, uh, deal with that, assholes. Yeah, you're setting a precedent, and a dangerous one at Real that. A dangerous one. Super dangerous one. Steve the, Sam, it's, oh, sorry. it's the age of vengeance in the NHL. They're promoting it, and that's exactly what they're trying to push out the last 20 years. Which, by the way, I don't have a problem with that. You can't have guys going around doing eye for an eye for two. Of course not. I don't have a problem with guys squaring off if there's a dispute. 
Yeah, that's part of how- that's the whole point of having of uh, the ability of having to fight is to squash the beef there and let it be done with. So these things don't happen. Yeah, sure. So we're gonna we're gonna allow that. That's dangerous, man. And Pacioretty knows better. He, yeah. His life almost ended two years ago. Yeah, and, and he's a good player too. I like Pacioretty. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I know of him, he so that matters. Judgment. Look, cocky players get hot; they get the bad judgment. I'm, this is the I have more of a problem with the NHL in this one. Yeah. Steve pretty- Samko's uh, name NHL Player of the Week. Lightning. Yeah, he also took uh, took the lead in overall points. Uh, excellent. Stamkos has probably one of the most wicked slap shots I've ever seen in my life. Pretty wicked. He's just, he's sick. Um, my team took him apart the other night with their probably best effort of the season. But um, yeah. yeah, you guys played really, really well and, the, and the other and night. It was just wow. Nash was I all guess, over like the, the fucking ice. League. Was was Nash not all over the ice or what, man? I, I, well, and you know what? There's a lot of Ranger fans that still believe this guy. It's his fault for for for, for what's going on. And that's that's. that's I, well, I'm hoping the four game losing streak that Nash didn't play in shows them. Yeah. And you can't sit there and cry about losing the Tortorello guys and some of the heart and soul of the team. I have to be honest with you. I'm not crazy about all those moves. But they didn't win. The what do you think about Tortorello being on the hot seat, man? I've been reading a lot about this. You that- can make that case. Well, welcome to New York, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Jake says. You can't do that if you're not winning. You can't run your mouth. You can't tell Brooksy to fuck off. Yeah. Well, you should be able to talk. Actually, if I saw Brooksy, I'd tell him to fuck off. Do you know the line that would be at the at his agent's phone if he gets released? I don't think it would be a good move. I he 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 it's would be. It's fair to judge just about any coach on this on under these circumstances under this season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We've already had one firing, you know, Boston, um, Buffalo Hello. fired a legend. Lindy had to go. Yeah, a legend never won nothing. 16 years in a hockey team's too long. They, you know, uh, on my show, we talked about uh, with uh, my good friend, um, Matty S., my old first sergeant. He, he was very eloquent in his love for, for Letty. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the guy, his, he's brought Buffalo to, to, it's not like they haven't been to the playoffs a bunch of time during his time. But, yeah, I agree. He did need to go. Look, five years is enough. If you don't get it done in five, six years, maybe. Maybe ten if you're good. He's been there for 16, ever. 16. Yeah. It's a long time. Long fucking time. I like Lindy Rupp. I'm not bashing him. A little whiny. I'm not bashing him. But anyway. Solani replaces, passes Luke Robitaille on the all-time goals list. Congratulations to Tamu Solani. Uh, well in his 40s now. And, and, yeah, fantastic. That, yeah, you know, it's funny because, you know, you have uh, Yager um, jumping on that top ten list. And then uh, I think he just passed Robitaille, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong on that. And Solani goes in. Uh, Tamu Solani uh, still has the rookie goal record. I think it was 82. It's like two of the best names, like best like hockey names, Timo Solani and, and Luke Robitaille. Those are just yeah. good hockey teams. Yeah, they're good hockey teams. I just like the names. They're good hockey names. I like Tamu, and I like the fact that he's on. He's on a very dangerous Ducks team. There's another team you don't want to catch. That's a scary team. They're, Thank, they're, they're, I'm glad they're not. They're going to be the number two seed more than likely. They're right with us, you know. And that's a, they play in the hardest division, which happens to be ours. Sure. And we just just nasty. It wouldn't be hard if everything would have went normal in the Eastern Conference this year, but I guess you're right now. <laughs> um, last la- last thing on the news. Uh, the NHL is still fighting over their Stochi. That's, by the way, that's how you say it. The Stochi Olympics. The, the the big roadblock, in the way, seems to be the TV rights. Yeah. Um. Well, we'll see if the IOC kind of commits. And that's a little weird because... Taking a little longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, just get it done, guys. Get it done. You know... They're not going to lose out on this money. You're dealing with Gary Bettman, bitches. <laughs> He's yeah. smarter, meaner, and more ruthless than any of you corrupt fucks over it. He's detached. Really is. Oh, he didn't give it. He's detached. Like you said a million times, he's not really the guy in charge. So he can be detached. There's so much misunderstanding of who this man is that I'm actually starting to like him. And I don't like him. <laughs> uh, there's so much misunderstanding of what he is and who he is and what's he about. And kind of, really what it means to be a businessman. Yeah. That I'm, I'm actually... I mean, he's... You're becoming I, he, quite enamored with Mr. Bet. And, uh, you know, that'd be nice if the NHL got the rights for the, for the broadcast. I don't know if they will because, I don't know. I, I, you know I'm not going to say who's right and who's wrong in this situation because I simply don't care. But I, I do think if they bargain in good faith, they should be doing a situation. Whoever gets the TV rights, it should be a situation where both guys get – both both leagues get the money. Absolutely. And, and I think that's great. Just get it done, guys. Come on. 
But d- d- let me tell you something. Don't don't play chicken with Gary Bettman. Yeah. Don't play chicken with Gary Bettman. That's like that's like playing <laughs> chicken with Obama. <laughs> yeah, Obama. Gonna, Obama's playing chicken, and the problem is he can see the light of the train. I am not a dictator. A lot of politics today, huh? Something I've, I've traditionally avoided. We uh we, we did miss one little story. You, you went you went to uh, kids hockey once, but we did forget about the uh, the the guy who tripped the kid hockey player. He, he got a prison sentence for tripping oh, a kid I hockey player. I did miss that. I'm familiar with the story. That's like two years ago, right? Yeah. Well, he finally got sentenced. We're gonna see if we air that up on the video. We'll check that out. Yeah. We can put that up there. Yes, yeah, Sam. It's, it, I try not to laugh though when I watch it, but I every time I do. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. You are a horrible person. You trip a kid. It's funny. I trip my daughter at least six times a day. <laughs> my kid. Every time she walks by me, I try to knock her down. Kick your kids, kick your dog. <laughs> what kind <laughs> of show dad. is this, son? I do what I got to do to get my kicks, it's literally. It's a hockey podcast, Dad. Uh, power records for the NHL this week. Chicago Blackhawks being at one. Anaheim Ducks being number two. We just mentioned that they are. Hey, who was number one? Yeah, Chicago Blackhawks. Who was number one? I'm the Blackhawks are number one. The Blackhawks, The Hawks baby! are definitely the scariest team, and I think it's already taken a week. It t- t- it's only taken. Jesus Christ, I hear my father screaming at me. It's taken about a week. Um, to, to, but it, it, it's, it's become a question who can beat this team. And to my, I, I only have two scenarios. Uh, a... They end up playing L.A. in the first round, and Loyola gets their shit together. Uh, two, they run into a goalie, doesn't matter who he is, that gets so hot that Taze Kane can't solve him. And that happens. That happens to big teams, even guys that win the President's Trophy. But that's all it is now. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks are clearly the best team in the league. And uh, you better figure out how to beat them, or they're going to be holding the Stanley Cup. I think a lot of people need to be praying is that uh, Crawford stays hurt. Because we're, we're we're not the same team. Crawford, really? is, I I am sold on Corey Crawford. You know, Locked you know, in. I tell you something. That's going to be a hard. If both those guys play well, it's going to be a real difficult. That could fuck them too. Because Emery's playing well, but he's not playing as well as Crawford. Maybe, but Emery's got a cup. Th- and, that may be that we that, that's fine and dandy. But Crawford's, uh, it's unbelievable. His uh his goals against have just one four six man. It's ridiculous. I'm not saying he's not the starter, but you don't want a situation where Emery starts to close the gap and the coach has got to make a, 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 a binary decision, you know. I may not know a ton about hockey. Yeah. But I know a goals against average under 150 is <laughs> <laughs> I know that is sheer lunacy. Look, the top two goalies in the league, it, it, it's uh, Crawford and uh, Greg, uh, Craig Anderson. They, they're both sub 150. The next closest guy is uh, Rasek with a 1.82. Man. It's, well, the guy, in, um, the guy in um, Ottawa just got hurt and had a ridiculous one. Too. Yeah, it's Craig Anderson. Yeah, Anderson, yeah. Good, good job, uh, good job with your prep. I was Craig. actually looking at my notes to try to transition <laughs> through this nightmare and stop listening to the fucking Blackhawks. You sound like a guy who got a lot of hits on YouTube. <laughs> For a Harlem Shake video. <laughs> Boston <laughs> Bruins, line of the number three, Canadians Damn. number four. By the way, these are subjective things. This is called the uh, NHL Power Rankings, which we're going to do every week now. Uh, Canucks number five, Penguins number six, Kings. That's interesting. The defending Stanley Cup champions have finally ride at the top ten. The Kings have now won five in a row in the past eight, including their victories over uh, Anaheim, St. Louis, and Detroit. Those are the teams you got to beat. They're not Seven going to be gang, bust, gang busting offensively, but they're scoring enough to win. Seven three in their last ten. They got a plus five differential. They're playing good hockey. They're getting better. It, it, plus five may not be like eye catching, but it's pretty damn good right now, especially the way they were playing early on in the year. You like it? that? Sounded like I knew what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was excellent. And uh, calling if John, Jonathan Quick, calling Jonathan Quick. You know, you did sound like you know what you're talking about. Ottawa moving into number eight. Um, New Jersey Devils number improve. number nine. St. Louis Blues number ten. And uh, that's the top ten. And, we destroyed St. Louis the other night. Did you see that? Yeah, Three I, nothing. Well, Destroy them. Jesus, you're, you're, you're high as a kite. I'm telling you, 17 0 and 3. I have the right to be so. 18 0 and 3. I have the right to be so. Funny by now. Uh, who knows? I, I got my own problems over here. <laughs> but a goalie ain't one. Oh, okay. That's the news, everybody. <laughs> uh, week in hockey news. Hope you enjoy. Hockey news! Yes, sir. Hockey news. And um, that leads us to the break. We have what a good band this week. 
what, what, what about the band? We have a new band. I'm gonna we have a new band? Yeah, we have a new band. What am I gonna do without my favorite segment? <laughs> what am I gonna do without the new hot music from Tommy C? It's not for me. Yeah. yeah not, you, I, have, I have no participation in this. Let's... I need music. I need the new music. Uh, now I gotta make sure I can't read anything because I don't have my glasses. All right, uh, going to a um, longtime friend. Uh, uh, Billy Hendrickson is a longtime friend of mine. Uh, he's, his family in, in the Woodbridge area is well renowned for, for having an absolute love for, uh, for rock music, uh, whether it be bass, drums, or guitars. Uh, Billy was, when I moved to Woodbridge, New Jersey, when I was all 14 years old, um, with my ridiculously long mallet that was probably three years out of style in 1992. <laughs> He's a mullet man. Um, Billy, oh, I dropped my mic. <laughs> Billy was one of those guys. Like I was sitting, I was sitting like in the in the gym uh, by myself with all the other cool kids and just kind of looking around, hoping I wouldn't get picked on. Um, I guess because I looked like a dirt bag, like he did, with you know ripped jeans and the long hair and the Megadeth T-shirt. Uh, um, he um, crossed the plane and walked across the gym. He says. And he said these, these brilliant words that, that, that resonate with me to this very day. He said, dude, what the fuck are you sitting over there for? Why don't you hang out with us, man? Which <laughs> led to years of douchebaggery, um, mischief, and a lot of good times. And uh, it all serious. Neat. Uh, this is one of the reasons I'm playing his songs. Uh, Billy was the first guy to, when you go to a new high school, it's the worst. It's, it's the worst. And I was a sophomore. I didn't even get to do my freshman year over there. That may have been a blessing, come to think of it. Um, yeah, it might have been. And Billy was a guy that, that, that said, hey, I'm going to be your friend. And he introduced me to a lot of other guys. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, you all go through separate ways. But, um, you know, me and Billy uh, go back. And I, I would like to repay Billy right now with those words because I never forgot that. Not for a minute. Uh, he, he was the first guy to reach out with me. And it's not always easy. For, I mean, shit, my people in my apartment complex I don't even know them. It, it's not easy for people to come out, and Billy's the type of guy who's like, hey, man, what are you sitting there for? Come hang out. And he introduced me to a lot of people. We had a lot of great times in those high school days. Uh, he, he has a band called All My Scars. All My Scars. All My Scars. It, it's flaming hot heavy metal. This is, All My Scars. You probably like this. It's hot, it's hot flaming metal. I man. probably I, – I, I'm going to guess that I'm not going to like it. Well, the – it's – there is no progressive aspect to it. They're not trying to be like a grunge band. They're not trying to be whatever rock is right now. This is metal. It's metal. It's metal. And is it, and is Billy, it metal or is oh, it metal? Billy makes no apologies for, for this band. Uh, he's also joined by um, uh, Joe Knavey. Uh, and uh, what happened was, and this this is actually, uh, if I could get a little serious for a minute, uh, Joe Canavy was uh, the guitar player that worked uh, with Billy in putting this project together. Uh, he tragically passed away two years ago, um, I, I, this past October. And uh, Billy, being the type of guy he is, like the type of guy that you know wants to you know bring people into the circle, he's kept this project open and alive uh, since then uh, to honor his friend and to push it push it harder. And uh, he, he's done that. And uh, um, I, I can't imagine what it's like to lose a friend that close. But uh, putting this together uh, is, is a nice tribute. And uh, he's got passion for rock and roll, man. And uh, he's a working class dude, and he's got passion for rock and roll, and he never forgets a friend. Well, now you've got me intrigued, because I can't possibly rip something so heartwarming. Yeah. I don't know if you're, you're just trying to... the fact that it's heavy metal! <laughs> it's metal! Still. But uh, like I said, Billy never forgets a friend. Never. And I hope uh, this little tribute, the fact that we're on two different sides of the pod, does the same. This is Just One Moment by All My Scars. See you on the other side of the break. Woo! Yeah. 
One moment by all my scars. Big shout out to Billy Hendrickson. And big shout out. Nice job, gentlemen. Yes, very good, very good. And I uh, really appreciate. And uh, if you have a local band or you're an unsigned act and you need a spin of some sort, um, now oh, give me a ring. Give me a ring. I'm talking to a rapper right now. Yeah. I'm talking to another rapper right now. So I am. You, I, I do spit hot fire. Yeah, you spit. Well, you weren't you weren't referring to me. No. Do you spit hot? Oh, I thought I do. I spit hot fire. You know what? That's your mission for next next show. You want me to rap? Yes. I could do that. You rap and then find steal some beat and oh, I can I can definitely steal things. That's great. That's, That's great. What I'm here for. You know, I was I was thinking it has nothing to do with speaking of flaming hot metal, I, I was thinking about doing this, um doing a prank call segment. There's a guy here that's got an article in the paper. Um no experience necessary. <laughs> Looking for heavy metal guitarist must like all forms of metal. And then he has no another experience. article plus no experience necessary looking for heavy metal singer, must like all types of metal. Wait a second, that's great. Because I, I don't know how to play guitar. I have no experience. So I, I want to call him up and say, hey, you said no experience necessary. I, I really can't play guitar, but Jesus, I'm great on expert and rock band. You know. I do love me some air guitar. I can do some things for it. <laughs> I, I wanted to call him up and pretend I had Tourette's and then uh, go with a singer's job and then just oh. break up. And do, yeah, you know, I've been singing for some time. I like every form of metal, even though um, uh, even Scandinavian metal. For whom the best? Belchos! And I think I could be a really good fit for your band, you know. Oh, by the way, I have Tourette's, you know. <laughs> I hope that's not a problem. <laughs> a good time. Jesus. Anything else left in hockey? Uh, we had a long, we had a long uh, news session, and we're no longer. Yeah, we, we had a long opening segment. Yeah, sure. Did. So we 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 are no longer doing the uh, the NHL team of the week because it just didn't work. It's dead. Dead is dead is dead, dead is the week. Sorry, 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 Golf Columbus. We weren't we weren't there for you. We didn't have any brilliant insight on your hockey team. <laughs> we got nothing for you, Your players. snake-bitten uh, um, hockey team. My God, you know? they're just decimated by injuries. And, they're, and you know what? They played really well uh, last night, too. Scored first. Scored first. It did. And they kept it in – they just kept the Hawks off balance the entire game. They played well. Yeah. No, they did. Uh, you know, it, it's funny because um, – I might have to give a little credit to Andy here. Uh, Andy said um, – which teams are really out of it, out of it? And if you look at the standings, you go on a 10-game run right now. You have right now. Next week, a different story. Right now. With the possible exception of the Blue Jackets. Yeah. Um, you, could be, you could be in there. I tried to bury Washington, and they're only like four points behind their own yeah. division. So, so you can't bury anybody. So you can't really bury anybody. Uh, the only one I'm thinking is the Blue Jackets. But they look like they're building something over there. So um, John Davidson recently went over there. took the They play hard. Yeah, and you know what? There's not too many. I don't find Blue Jacket games boring. No. Montreal Canadian games are boring. Yeah. They're snooze fests. Can be. Snooze fests. Um, but, uh, you know, who's out of it? Nobody. 
Nobody. Nobody's out of it. Even Philadelphia's turning around. This, not in this sprint of a season. No. Philadelphia's turning around. They're nipping at the Rangers' teals, heels. Yeah, they are. Nobody's out of it. Everybody's in it. Um, I'll, I'll ask you, what do you think of this season so far? What do you think of this, this season, this lockout season? Okay, see, I have to answer that in two parts. Because, of course, the Blackhawks side of me is like, this is the greatest season ever in the world. <laughs> it's wonderful. You won't even remember it. If they go out in the first <laughs> round, trust me, I know these things. Uh, we're not going out in the first round. Uh, the other side of me who's just learning the NHL, you know, I, I had a lot of concerns for this season. I thought hey, there has been a lot of injuries, which is understandable because, you know, nobody had a training camp and all that stuff. That's fine. But, you know, the play has been a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting a lot more sloppy play, and it really, I'm pleasantly surprised by the overall play of the league. These guys came into a tough situation. I'm talking about the everybody. Yeah, sure. And they're playing their asses off, and I'm, I'm having a great time with this season. It, it, it's You know what? Every game feels like a playoff-type scenario sure. because there's only 43 games. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 uh, there's nothing you said that I could possibly even begin. Begin. I, I think it's a pleasant surprise. We didn't think as a, you know, we had that. We covered an article with the Evgeny Malkin off the top of the news, and you know the injuries are, um, I don't know the statistics, but they're, I'm sure they're slightly higher. Like they would it'd be in a Canada Cup, World Cup year. But they're not overwhelming. They're not overwhelming, and yeah. they're normal. And uh, people get hurt, get playing contact sports. You know, just happens. And uh, you know, hopefully, I mean, geez, I, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I mean, all right, I didn't want Cindy Crosby to get hurt. You know, because he's so important to the league. Um, <laughs> hockey, people would just stop playing hockey if, if, if it's It's quite possible. Yeah, they would just stop. You know, you know it, it, it's kind of unfair you even say that because he didn't play much for the last two years because the the concussion thing. Oh, and the NHL went on. <laughs> what a the NHL found a way. <laughs> they, they did it. <laughs> they did. Just, it was hard. Well, that, that's easy. Always, always, always the argument too. What do you do when a player on national television gets hurt like that? You move on. Let me tell you, you take a cue from the WWE. The Jerry Lawler has a heart attack on camera, and you keep just going on. You be as respectful as you can, but you move the fuck we can't, forward. We can't stop. You know, that brings me to a story. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, I got to watch this one. Oh. Uh-oh. We're on Tommy Alert 5. Yeah. I, um... I, uh... When I was um, younger, uh, more uh, self-righteous man, I witnessed a, uh, a death, and it was horrible. It was it was horrible, and uh, I um, it happened uh, basically right in front of us. I'm not going into too much detail because I think one of the listeners uh, was was, uh, was directly affected by this, and um, yeah. it was a horrible tragedy. I questioned uh, whether it was appropriate to carry on, even though it was a wedding. And, uh, you know, I was, when I was, I was younger, a lot more self-righteous. And, uh, I remember, um, we had a, we had an Irish, uh, uh, my, my parents, my parents, uh, had a cleaning lady and I was over there and, um, and she's kind of cute. <laughs> so we had an Irish, <laughs> we had an Irish cleaning lady and I told her the story and I, I kind of, I wanted to get, you know, I want to get an Irishman's opinion on it because they're not short of opinions. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Even their descendants from America aren't short on opinions. <laughs> and by the way, one of the things I got in trouble for at work was talking. <laughs> no shit. You surprised? Are you shocked? I'm not. I, I, I'll get too much. That part I agreed <laughs> with. You know, so I kept interrupting the guy that was lecturing me over talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to say your piece. Yeah. Exactly. If you don't, your head will explode. Yeah, because then I just started yelling, last word, last word, last word. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, I asked her, I said, what do you think of this? I don't I don't think that was right. I think it was disrespectful. And she looked at me and goes, oh, get, get, get a hold of yourself. What's the matter with you? It's a wedding. You keep dancing. That's what you do. I was like, they literally took this man off the dance floor. And, and, and it gets, he goes, that's what you're supposed to be. Wouldn't you, if you're in her position... That if if your uh, relative passed away, do you think you'd want him to stop? I, mean, I know I sound like a Scotchman. <laughs> it's the it's the worst accent I've ever heard. Well, yeah, that's funny. Uh, well, you, you you pick up and you move on. It's a celebration. And I know if it was you, you wouldn't want your son or your daughter to just stop. 
Yeah, I do. I sound like Gordy over at the Scotch Soda over here. You sound like a retarded Seamus. <laughs> it's horrible. And I, I was being so like surprised with the force of the argument. And I started thinking, you know, I'm an idiot. I'm a moron. That's exactly what you do. You pick up and you move on. It's a tragedy. But this is a, a wedding is a celebration of life and and life to come. Yeah. You don't stop. You got, the guy died with a beer and a girl in his hand. Yep. And you know what? That's special. There's a hell of a lot worse ways to go. And let we me know, tell most you. of us, you know damn well, me and you probably aren't going that way. Hell no. I'm going to die in my attic, probably in my own puke. Yeah. I'm going to have a colostomy bag. Oh, hmm. that's not good. You think I'm kidding around, folks? No. I had an injury. Real bad. Don't have one now. It's coming. He's, <laughs> he's got about five joking. inches of You think I'm trying to... Well, that's one of the funny blood. things Tommy said. No, no. It's, it's like... Uh, it's it's likely when I'm an older man. Colostomy bag is coming. Yeah, It'd be like that horrible scene in that movie, The Wrestler. Oh god. Yeah, most realistic sports movie ever. But uh, you know what? Don't get you got to pick up and you move on. And if something tragic happens, even a death, uh, you pick up and you move on and you honor uh, the people that passed the best you can. And you make um, you make changes um, uh, to help, not hurt or hinder. And make things more free and and uh, for for all people. Tragedies happen. Uh, I know all you soccer moms think everything can be inverted, but it can't. And it, about the only way I know um, to avert absolutely everything is to live in a place that was beyond the wall in 1989. So that's that's the only way I know averting stuff. I'll take my chances. You know, I think the the key, as with anything, is about being respectful about it. Yeah. You know, and there's a balance to life, sure. and there's a balance when it comes to death. Sure. Yeah, it's accepting it and moving forward. You know, you can't you can't end it just because of a tragedy. And not thinking, being so self righteous to think you could prevent something like this, or seeing an empty gesture like ending a, a, a wedding procession, uh, procession would would. And it would have been complete empty gesture. It would. I mean, I honestly thought. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying like I, I thought that was the right thing to do, but it wasn't. And there's nothing wrong with thinking that, by the way. There's nothing wrong with being over moral at times. No, there is, and I, that's that's where I had to learn that. And I think that uh, um, that that illegal Irish person <laughs> that, who, who she told, told you stories, who told me stories about when she first came and the INS would raid the uh, um, the place. Oh, she, I love when a woman tells me about when she first came. <laughs> she first, when she first came to the country, she'd work in these places where there was a lot of Mexicans. Um, Mexican illegal immigrants, and what happens? The INS would arrive, and she was illegal too. So she'd run, right? Ah, well, everybody clear house. Was, la migra, la migra. Catch her first because she was slow, and they say, they say, uh, you know, oh, you're white, <laughs> and she'd get let go. Why are My poor Jose and Maria are 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 trying to catch a cab so they get away from get away. <laughs> See, she should have been smart. She didn't have to be fast. She just had to be able to trip one of the other people. She's good looking. That's all you got to do. Good that luck. helps. Oh, I don't know where you guy lost me. Well, can you help me? Oh, man, we're looking for brown people. Step all she had to do was not run. You know? If she didn't run, if she if she would have chased after one of them, it would have been Yes, fun. they chase after. Join, join the hunt. Exactly. I'm one of you, laddie. <laughs> laddie. Horrible. But, uh, yeah, she was cool. She also dipped out. She's like, we never saw her again. She's like, you know. <laughs> how, do you, how are you in your early 40s and just still – emotionally like 25 i don't know oh there you, you could be irish that's how you do it <laughs> that's how and yeah, never yeah, it's irish. I mean, they are party girls man they're party girls the day they die they're she sipping on jameson on just before they check out on the deathbed there you go. and you know what that's the way to go sometimes yeah sometimes hey too much anything kill you and there was no good for you and it could hurt other members but you know what living life to its fullest uh, i heard a i heard a uh uh, a radio guy once said, "Why put a pink lung in the ground?" Or who said yeah. that? Yeah, somebody said that. Is that an advocation for smoking? No, it's 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 a symbol. It's not advocation. Smoking's no good for you. Uh, oh, it's shit. a symbol that we should use our bodies up, within reason, of course, not to the point where you know it affects your family. You know, use our bodies up because we're all going to the same place. I also had a priest tell me, an Irish priest. He goes, "I never understood why you would get healthy just to die." <laughs> Essentially, that's what we're all doing. Yeah, we do have a fixation with health, even though we know that it's only going to prolong the inevitable so long. So let's distract ourselves with the great game of hockey. 
Uh, Dave, you got any plugs? I always have plugs. This week, we had a very special host because, you know, my good friend Thomas C. has been so busy with <laughs> with his new changeover at his job. And uh, so a view from the couch had a new, uh, my, my old first sergeant. It was a good time. Ooh. I have no idea Last who was. It was, uh, it was top? Yeah, it was uh, Mr. Matty Shea, Maddie. my good friend, one of the best human beings I've ever met in my life. First class, got me out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> Can't beat that. That's not, a, that's not a goof. No, it's not. Uh, he's, he's an awesome guy who truly cares. And you know what? He was fantastic this week right, on a few so couch. I, was, I didn't have time, but it, the God's honest truth, Dave, is, is, is just what's going on. Oh, I understand. Uh, that's the only reason we're doing the show this early. I know. I'm like, I'm still kind of sleepy. I'm tired. But like 12, Let me yeah. look. I got yelled. View from the couch so coming back at you probably Monday or Tuesday. Uh, are you going to be there? Yeah. All right. Okay. You heard it here, folks. First, folks. That's the my other plug, of course, is the book that nobody seems to want to buy, The Chronicles of L.J. Stevens. I worked very hard on it. Somebody read it and leave a message on Amazon so I can feel better about myself. It only costs you three bucks to read. No big deal. Check me out and tell me what a horrible author I am. Uh, That's all I got. That's all you got? That's all I got. Uh, we'll be posting the link below. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait. Oh, I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I've been reached out to by our old friends at SCR. Oh, yeah. What, what's going on with those guys? Well, it looks like they would like to um, start our relationship up again, I think. I'm getting the inklings that uh, we're going to start cross-promoting once again. So That'd let me go ahead and give them a shout-out and say, check out our good friends over at Soul Crushing Radio. Okay. They're fantastic. Now that we like them again, they're fantastic. <laughs> we never did like them. <laughs> Well, we, you and I went. We had a conversation for like two hours about. I didn't know we were gonna bring it up. <laughs> we were like conspiracy theorists. I, well, first of all, I heard somebody got sick over there, and yes. uh, they and ended glad, around. They ended the, uh, around the same time that we we did our show, and I posted something, uh, or said something, that was untrue that I thought was true at the time, and uh, I thought I I immediately corrected it. But I didn't get the impression that the uh, apology was well received. That was. That's but I think we were wrong about the whole thing. I think we and said it. Well, as soon as we found out, it was. Um, as soon as we found out, I don't even remember what it was. I'll be perfectly honest with you. You probably think. And I, 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 I think it had something to do with me because you usually come to my defense. Yeah. I'm like, I don't must, know what it was. Must must shelter fatty. I have to stick up for fatty. I don't, I, don't, I, I gotta I gotta look it up, but I remember it was something like uh, I, I wrote like, "Hey, my my bad, shouldn't have posted this uh, thing." I think he thought they were ripping me. I don't remember, but and then I wrote back like when I found out that wasn't the case, I said, "You know, that wasn't the case." And then I got, you know, we pulled some shit, but that's pretty messed up. And I was like, "No, no, it's not Dave, it's me, and no one's pulling a shenanigans. It's me. I I uh, I, I missed um, I missed. I don't remember what it was. We're gonna have to go back. Not important." Not important. But I- the important thing is Soul Crushing Radio and A Shot from the Point, A View from the Couch, all of it. We're all back and we're all doing our magic once again, tickling your funny bones and your sports and other nerdgasm G spots. And then we're here for you. We're back. We're giving you the best quality we possibly can. So support us. Support Soul Crushing Radio. Please. Support the independent arts programs in general because you know what? It's, it's, it's something that needs to be nurtured. <laughs> they're back. They're back. Their dick and fart jokes in full effect. Yeah, dick jokes. Some dick crazy. jokes. It's good times. Uh, check out Jake. Le- uh, Jake Link, comedian in New Jersey. Uh, check- God, that guy is funny. Yeah, he saved my. Uh, saved my ass. Uh, ch- ch- check out his link below. His Twitter. He's got no further dates coming up, and it's good because I never remember him anyway. Yeah, uh, he was real funny on our last podcast. He, he's done two podcasts on the Shop from the Point. Big hockey fan. And blows me out of the water. That sucks. Check out uh, Jake Lake Comedy. Twitter. Give him a call. Tell him I'm funny. It'd be nice to you. If you keep being good, I'm going to perform Seppeku. <laughs> Ritualistic suicide. Yeah. Does it, you know you know how to say that in, ta- in, in Italian? Seppeku? I know. Seppeku. I have no idea. No, you say uh, Rick DiPietro. <laughs> <laughs> 
with a lot of hand movement. <laughs> Uh, JohnFreemanMusic.com 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 John Freeman is a musician for hire. Check out JohnFreemanMusic.com with all his latest efforts. Um, he is the official music guru of A Shot from the Point. Ah. Uh, steal some music from his for me? I, I did, and I sent you the... <laughs> I totally just busted you out. I said I did, and I sent it to you, and I never got a response, so I didn't think you liked it. You sent it to me? Yeah. Are you sure you sent 100%, it to me? Hundred percent. It's not on Facebook. I, d- I didn't get I it. I did. I you, you, used your intro, and I, I remember that night we had the conversation. And you were, oh, that that was that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I never told. Well, you that was might have been my mixing. <laughs> it was so bad. I was like, you, know, you said like you didn't want to do it. I wasn't true, and then I came up with something. I thought you're a goof. I thought that was a goof. Oh fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Make me feel guilty all night for not helping you with your dumb show, and then I, 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 was, uh, I, did, I it was a we had a conversation. And I went in. It was after a hockey game, so it was like four in the morning. I threw, yeah, it, <laughs> and it probably showed. <laughs> oh man, I'm such a horrible person. Well, who else do we have? Uh, soul crushing. Uh, you from the couch. Uh, Johnny Freeman. What do we got? Oh well, fucking! I can't get I can't get Jay to get back on. I, uh, and I don't know if he's got anything going on. Come on. He, he sent me a letter. like because we were talking about ugly hockey players last week, and um, he's like, I want to talk about ugly hockey players because he's totally obsessed with Tuka Rust <laughs> and that Tuka of a face he has. Does have a Tuka face? Hey Jay, if you want to get on, you gotta make plans. And no longer am I doing a show at three o'clock in the morning. Nope. It's just. I get the giddies, and then I was drunk, and I can't do that. It, it was. It was. Is it really overwhelming that I'm totally intoxicated in that show? Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Yeah. If, if 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 people's radio had bodies there, you would have been groping them. <laughs> Awkwardly. Yeah, probably. You were the Arnold Schwarzenegger of 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 radio host that day. You were groping everything in sight. Yeah. Horrible. And I gave roaming hands. And I also, um, I had a child out of Wiglock. It's called a view from the couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's our bastard. <laughs> the bastard son of shot from the point of view from the couch. We do our thing. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Jake Link, last week. Like to hear from uh, Jersey Jason Letch and future show. Why don't you bring him up one more time, though, to make me feel a little more insecure about myself, you son of a bitch? Jersey Jason Letch, thank you, Dave. For your contribution, very, oh, very uh, funny contribution, and uh, you should make donations to uh, Parents Against Pedophiles. <laughs> parents Get up for your damage, <laughs> or call it tap. <laughs> parents Against Pedophiles, good time. Thank you very much. We will be up. Our show comes out on Mondays, unless we get it up earlier. So it's a weekly show. And- uh, well, if you ask my wife, she she can confirm. I've never got it up earlier. <laughs> I'm taking the easy way out, man. You alley it, I'm going to oop it. I don't care how it's <laughs> <you're gonna laughs> yeah, Even if it goes off the rim and back in the fucking center court. And that's how it would be if I did dunk. Thank you very much. Thank you to our new listeners. Uh, we, we picked up a lot of a, uh, a subscribers this week alike. Tons of the most positive feedback I've ever got. Um, and uh, we really appreciate you hanging around, especially all in Canada who are supporting us and, and speaking out. Uh, really dig what you're doing. Hope you dig what we're doing. If you have any suggestions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. This is Tommy C. And that is... Davey V. Davey V. Special Dead on Dave. We'll see you. I'm dead on Dave. That's right. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> Who gave you that name? Davey V. I think I did it to myself. Brilliant. I know. Hey, he's Tommy C. Davey V. Patty S. It's a, it's, it's, it's a formula. Yeah, it's original, too. <laughs> I took the first letter of my last name. And <laughs> hey, man, I do what I gotta do. Thank you very much for, for this edition of the Shop on the Point. We hope to see you next week. Peace and see ya. Peace, hockey fucks. Yeah.